Hello, welcome. Thank um, you. Mira, would you mind introducing yourself and who you work for? Uh, my name is Mira Edelstein and I work for Ecopeace, Friends of the Earth Middle East. And I'm from the Tel Aviv office, but we're based in Tel Aviv, Bethlehem and Amman. We're a unique regional environmental organization with the Middle East branch of Friends of the Earth, which is the largest grassroots environmental organization in the world. Um, and we're the one in the Middle East area. And you said that you are the only regional environment organization. Sadly, there are no others. There are several, um, certainly there are Israeli organizations, there's also Palestinian and Jordanian ones, all of them separate, but we're the only regional one and we work on transboundary water issues that um, deal with all the countries together. And relate specifically to the Jordan River. We have the Jordan River, we have the Dead Sea, also mm. in our realms. These are two hugely important international, you know, global yeah. water issues that yeah. are in, in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. We also have shared streams, we have a shared aquifer, but we're really focusing, um, especially this week, on the Jordan River mm -hmm. because here in Stockholm, during the World Water Week, we have an opening of an exhibit that will be yes, traveling definitely. around Europe, mm. um, and it's a, an exhibit about the Jordan River. Yeah, and this is the information, and on the back it says that it will be held in Galerie Contrast. Thank you. Tell us more about that. So the opening night will be Tuesday night, tomorrow night, starting at 6 o'clock. Um, and we'll have some speakers from CEDA and from the municipality, I, I believe. And um, it just are beautiful photographs, stark photographs mm -hmm. of the river, which shows you know, the devastation actually that the river has gone through over the last 50, 60 years. And what does that devastation come from, would you say? Um, you know, very many similar issues that are around the world, things like diversion of water from rivers, pollution of, of the river. But we, again, because this is the holy Jordan River that half of humanity, you know, is, is dear to this river, then it's, we don't see that it's a local issue. This is a really important river. Now, we've, take, we've done uh, research over the last few years, Israeli, Palestinian, Jordanian joint research with experts and scientists and have concluded very sadly that 96 to 98 percent of the river is being diverted. There's only about 2 to 4 percent left in the river of what there once was. And what is left is pollution. It's raw sewage, it's agricultural runoff, it's saline waters, and it's really devastated the ecosystem, and this really just has to stop. Yeah. It's partly due to the conflict, you know, because every country is just grabbing the water the way they can mm -hmm. without, without consideration of the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to promote the rehabilitation of this river for the benefit of all the peoples in the area. And mm -hmm. to promote dialogue, to promote projects. Part of this, um, part of this photograph exhibit is about an area where the Yarmouk River joins the Jordan River and we're, we have an initiative to create a peace park right in this area that joins Israel and Jordan. That sounds so interesting. And um, it is, we have, you know, mayoral agreement on this, we have the people behind this project and it, it's a wonderful cooperation people project around a very important water resource. Does that project have a name? It's called the Jordan River Peace Park Initiative. Great. Great. Um, you know, with the conflict right now, it's um, it's a bit stuck. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and still, you know, we do have we, we are still trying to promote it. And many of the photos that are taken and, and are exhibit in the in the exhibit are from that exact area. There used to be once a hydroelectric power plant built right where the Yarmouk comes into the Jordan River that once had so much water in it that it could produce electricity. Wow. And today, if you look at it, it is so sad because there's no water and, and it, of course, cannot produce electricity or anything mm. near. Thank you so much for sharing about that. It's very interesting. Thank you.